In the dimly lit corners of Christian history, there exists a narrative seldom discussed in church sermons or mainstream theological texts, the mysterious and often convincing world of prophecy. Imagine a charismatic figure emerges, captivating crowds with grand speeches, performing miraculous healings, even raising the dead and unveiling your deepest secrets. Who wouldn't want to be healed from excruciating pains they've been enduring for what seems to be a lifetime? No one wants to live in agony. Knowing your birth sign could also open doors for you through the stars. Didn't God in Genesis 1.14 say, let the lights in the firmament of the heaven be for signs and for seasons and for days and years? Yes, he did. However, as with other texts, context is crucial. From ancient divinations to modern day fortune telling, the realm of Christian prophecy is fraught with contradictions, controversies and warnings from the scripture itself. Here we seek to explore the darker side of Christian prophecy, shedding light on the practices that teeter on the edge of the sacred and the profane. As we traverse this shadowy landscape, we will uncover the biblical admonishments against sorcery, the allure of forbidden knowledge and the grim warnings issued to those who seek to harness the supernatural for personal gain. Practices such as these are all about the self and challenges the very foundation of faith and forces us to question the boundaries of spiritual guidance. Christian prophecy often conjures images of divine foresight and holy visions, yet beneath this sanctified surface lurks a history riddled with darker undertones. From the outset, Christian texts have both endorsed and warned against the mystical powers of prophecy, creating a paradox that continues to perplex some on the outside looking in and even some on the inside of the Christian faith. The allure of knowing the future or deciphering divine will has always been potent, capable of leading the faithful into realms of spiritual enlightenment or down paths of destructive deceit. This dabbling into such spiritual aspects have been entered into by some with the intention to seek closure after having lost a loved one, which makes this a complex dynamic within Christian theology. Throughout the Bible, prophecy serves as a crucial communicative tool between the divine and the mortal. Figures like Isaiah, Daniel and John the Apostle were revered as prophets who provided guidance and forewarning through their divine connections. However, alongside these sanctioned voices were clear warnings about false prophets and forbidden practices. Scriptures such as Deuteronomy 18, 22 caution against prophets whose predictions do not come to pass, marking them as false messengers not to be feared or followed. If God's prophets only need a fraction of a percentage accuracy, then couldn't a meteorologist or financial analyst be considered a prophet? Let's unpack some biblical directives and set false prophets against the backdrop of historical practices of prophecy. Sorcery and divination represent a facet of prophetic practice that the Bible explicitly condemns. Defined broadly as the attempt to control the natural world through supernatural means, or to foresee the future through magical rites, these practices are often lumped together with legitimate prophetic gifts in contemporary misunderstandings. Leviticus 19.26, for example, expressly prohibits divination and sorcery. In exploring these definitions in detail using scriptural examples as highlights, we see the fine line between accepted prophetic behavior and practices considered out of bounds by biblical standards. One of the most telling episodes in the Bible concerning the dangers of unsanctioned prophecy involves King Saul and his illicit consultation with the Witch of Endor, as narrated in 1 Samuel 28. Desperate to win a crucial battle and feeling abandoned by God, Saul seeks out a medium, a practice directly contradicting God's commandments. Let's have a detailed look at this narrative, discussing the theological implications and the dire consequences faced by Saul as a result. It serves as a very notable cautionary tale about the perils of seeking divine knowledge through forbidden means. The Old Testament is replete with verses that warn against engaging in sorcery and related practices. Leviticus 20 verse 6, for instance, warns that turning to mediums and spiritists will defile the people involved. Isaiah 8 verse 19 criticizes those who consult the dead on behalf of the living, suggesting they should consult God instead. What are the theological and moral foundations behind the prohibitions against sorcery and how they were intended to protect the spiritual integrity of the community? Ephesians 4 verses 11 to 13 elucidates the role of prophetic gifts in Christianity, emphasizing that such gifts are intended to equip the saints for the work of ministry 
and for building up the body of Christ. This designates a stark contrast to the self-serving nature of sorcery and divination. There is an intended use of prophetic gifts within the church, distinguishing these legitimate practices from the corrupt pursuits of power through forbidden knowledge. The Bible provides specific criteria to identify true prophets, a necessary measure given the potential deceit by false prophets. A general motivation speech with common sense readings does not qualify as prophecy, and calling oneself a prophet is equivalent to an individual announcing how humble he is. There are also biblical tests for prophets, considering their implications for modern Christians, seeking to discern true spiritual guidance in a world where false prophetic claims are common. True prophecy in the Bible is often accompanied by physical or spiritual signs. Daniel, for instance, experienced physical weakness when receiving visions, as noted in Daniel 10, 8, 16. These manifestations serve as another layer of authentication of true prophetic experiences and provide concrete signs to accompany the prophetic message. There are dangers in misguided prophecies. Following false prophets can lead to spiritual, emotional and sometimes physical ruin. The Bible is littered with examples of individuals and groups who suffered greatly for following false prophetic guidance. These dangers can be highlighted using both scriptural examples and modern-day incidents to illustrate the severe consequences of misplaced faith in false prophecies. Biblical prophecies often focus on the end times, a period characterized by turmoil and spiritual deception. In examining these prophecies with particular attention to their interpretation and the risks of misinterpretation in contemporary Christian settings, we can see where the allure of apocalyptic prophecy can often lead to sensationalism and fear rather than spiritual preparation. There is a seduction of power when prophecy leads astray. The quest for prophetic power can corrupt absolutely. History is replete with religious leaders who have used the guise of prophecy to manipulate and control. The pursuit of prophetic authority can lead to moral and spiritual decay supported by historical examples and biblical admonishments. Jim Jones, the leader of the People's Temple, is a notorious example of a false prophet. He initially gained a following in the 1950s and 1960s by preaching messages of social justice and racial equality. However, Jones's teachings became increasingly extreme, and he exercised authoritarian control over his followers. In 1978, he led over 900 of his followers to a mass murder-suicide in Jonestown, Guyana, by persuading them to drink a cyanide-laced beverage. Another example is David Koresh, the leader of the Branch Davidians. Claiming to be the final prophet and the Lamb of God, Koresh exerted a powerful influence over his followers, preaching apocalyptic messages and engaging in illegal activities. In 1993, a 51-day standoff between the Branch Davidians and federal agents at the group's compound in Waco, Texas, ended in a catastrophic fire. Not all false prophets go to these extremes, but we live in an age where misplaced leadership and prophetic claims are sometimes subtle yet rampant. God gives guidance for the faithful and tell his people how to approach prophecy today. In a world brimming with supposed prophetic voices, it can be challenging for the faithful to navigate the waters of true and false prophecy. The Bible gives practical advice for Christians on how to approach prophetic messages, emphasizing the importance of scriptural alignment and community discernment. When identifying a true prophet in vision, the Bible provides several physical evidences to consider. Firstly, the prophet will initially lose physical strength, as described in Daniel 10, 8. This may be followed by supernatural strength, as seen in Daniel 10:18, 19. During the vision, the prophet may have no breath in their body, according to Daniel 10.17. Despite this, they are able to speak, as indicated in Daniel 10.16. The prophet is also not aware of earthly surroundings, as seen in Daniel 10.5, 8 and 2 Corinthians 12, 2-4. Notably, their eyes will be open, as described in Numbers 24.4. While not all these signs must be present at once, they collectively provide crucial evidence of a true prophetic vision. Certain types of false prophets are explicitly named and condemned in the Bible. Deuteronomy 18:10 to 12 and Revelation 21. Eight warn against soothsayers, astrologers, sorcerers, those who claim to contact spirits of the dead, mediums who channel spirits, practitioners of witchcraft, fortune tellers, interpreters of omens, those who cast spells or use charms, 
spiritists who claim to talk to the dead, and witches or warlocks, psychics. The Bible states that the dead cannot be contacted by the living as supposed spirits of the dead are actually evil angels or devils, Revelation 16, 13 to 14. Practices such as using crystal balls, palm reading, leaf deciphering, astrology, and talking with supposed spirits of the dead are not ways God communicates with people and are considered abominations according to Deuteronomy 18, 12. Those who engage in these practices will be excluded from God's kingdom. Galatians 5, 19 to 21, Revelation 21, 8, 22, 14 to 15. One modern day figure known for claiming to perform healing miracles is Benny Hinn. Hinn, a televangelist, has been widely reported and criticized for his miracle crusades where he purportedly heals individuals suffering from various ailments. Numerous claims of miraculous healings have been investigated and follow-ups have often found no verifiable evidence of these healings. Critics argue that Hinn's practices exploit vulnerable individuals and capitalize on their faith for financial gain, raising serious ethical and theological concerns. Another widely discussed figure is Todd Bentley, an evangelist associated with the controversial Lakeland Revival. Bentley has claimed to heal people through physical touch and even aggressive actions like kicking or punching, which he alleges are divinely inspired methods. Despite these dramatic displays, many of his healing claims have been scrutinized and often remain unsubstantiated. Bentley's ministry has faced scrutiny not only for the questionable authenticity of the healings, but also for his personal conduct, which has further cast doubt on his legitimacy as a genuine prophet. In embracing the light and acknowledging the shadows, it is clear that while prophecy is a gift meant to enlighten and guide, it carries with it a profound responsibility. By acknowledging both the light and shadows of prophecy, believers can navigate their spiritual paths with wisdom and caution, since prophecy is the eyes of the church. A church without the gift of prophecy would be blind. The Bible outlines several criteria for identifying a true prophet, Firstly, they must lead a godly life, as indicated in Matthew 7, 15 to 20. They should also be called to service by God, as described in Isaiah 6, 1 to 10, Jeremiah 1, 5 to 10, and Amos 7, 14 to 15. True prophets must speak and write in alignment with the scriptures, as stated in Isaiah 8, 19 to 20, and their predictions should come to pass. According to Deuteronomy 18, 20 to 22, true prophets will experience visions, as mentioned in Numbers 12, 6. For the record, biblical prophecy does not have a darker side. If it did, it would not be biblical. The strange thing is, if God has worked miracles through his prophets, how is it that working great miracles is not proof that a prophet is of God?